Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another Outside of Talk episode. My name is Pat, and today's subject is battery degradation in EVs. But before we dive into that subject, I'm just going to ask that you please press the like button on this video and subscribe to their channel. We're just a couple of military veterans that do car reviews, and we also talk about anything automotive, and we sure could use your support. Now, let's dive into our subject. Battery degradation, and I'll be honest, this thumbnail is probably the most clickbait thumbnail I've ever created. I'm just saying that so that you guys can skip the part where you comment clickbait, clickbait, clickbait. However, I am talking about this subject, and the numbers are actual numbers that came up in the study. So I'm not making anything up, guys, but I am going to clarify a lot of things about this study that I'm talking about. Just to give you a little bit of a background history, and I am going to ask you to excuse me. My voice is weird. I am fighting a cold. A little bit of honey water goes a long way, but I'm still going to sound like I'm dying. Don't worry. I, it's almost done. That being said, we are going to talk mostly about Tesla and the battery degradation and the study that we came across. Essentially, Tesla... It's no secret that they've been overinflating their numbers, their range EPA estimates numbers for years. It is known in the automotive industry that whenever you get a range estimate from Tesla, deduct 30%, and that's basically your actual range that you're going to be able to attain. A lot of YouTubers out there will flat out say that they've never been able to attain EPA range estimate divulged by Tesla or stated by Tesla and that is the norm across the industry. Perhaps the exception is the latest refresh of Model 3 which funny enough has less range than previous year but those numbers are actually been noted to be attainable by YouTubers. I have not yet tested that out. So basically that's the background of it. Tesla has always overinflated their range estimates. And before you go and say everybody does that, that is actually not true. There's many manufacturers out there that we've been able to reach the EPA numbers. And yes, some are actually exaggerated. Some you get close to, but none are exactly in the same category as Tesla, where it's always, always 30% difference. So that's the background history on it. And uh, you can comment below whether you agree or not, but I'm telling you, you're wrong. That being said, let's talk about this study by Recurrent Auto. Essentially, what Recurrent did is they followed 7,000 Model 3s and 5,000 Model Ys for a long period of time. I think it's like four years and a half now that they've been following these vehicles. And they've been monitoring the battery degradation or the range degradation more so. And they came up with the fact that after three years' time both the Model 3 and the Model Y could only attain 64% of their range. So you look at those numbers, you're like, wow, that's a 36% degradation in three years' time? That's enough to scare anybody away from adopting an EV. I don't care who you are. Those batteries aren't cheap. <laughs> They've been known to cost in excess, maybe not from Tesla, but anywhere between $30,000 to $60,000 for just a battery replacement. That is absolutely nuts that you would have to lose that much range in three years time. Well, if you think that that's actually way too far fetched to be true, you're not too far off. But the funny thing is, Tesla did this to themselves. <laughs> they actually did, let me explain. So remember when I mentioned that Tesla always inflated their numbers? Well, in the study what they did is they took the EPA estimated range, and then they tracked where it was at from there. You can look at these graphs. From day one, these vehicles were not putting up 100% of the range. They were always putting up 70%. Hence, all everybody is saying there's always a 30% inflation from Tesla. Well, there it is in the actual numbers. They followed well over 7,000 Model 3s and 5,000 Model Ys, and that's what it came up to. They were all starting at 70%. So the fact that they only have 64% of their range after three years is not a 36% degradation. I'm sorry to burst your bubbles for 
a lot of you Tesla haters, hey, I'm not a fan of Tesla, but in this fact, it's only a 6% degradation, but serves them right, serves them right to have overinflated their numbers, and now there's these numbers going around saying 36% degradation in only three years' time. Heck, why not? I mean, but in actual reality, it's only a 6% degradation. Now, degradation as far as range is not something that's only typical to uh, EVs. I have a eight-year-old vehicle and it doesn't get the same fuel economy. It doesn't have the same acceleration. It doesn't get the same amount of miles per tank than it did when I first got it. The degradation is... I don't know. I didn't calculate the percentage, and I don't think anybody has. You know why? Because internal combustion engine vehicles, well, you can fuel up at every corner of the street, basically. There's no shortage of where you can top up your fuel tank. EVs, there's a big infrastructure problem. Not just that, it doesn't just take five minutes to charge your vehicle. So if you were to have a over 30% degradation in three years, that would scare a lot of people. But even 2% every year, that's enough to scare the average person to convert to an EV. Even though that may not be as far off as internal combustions, as far as losing range. That being said, batteries are ridiculously expensive. And there's not a lot known about EVs. They haven't been around that long. And even if they have been along, 50% of the EVs on the road or from 2022 and between 2022 and now. So this, it's hard to get mass amount of data related to EVs, plus new batteries are coming in. LFB is supposed to have way less degradation than lithium, lithium ion. And the, the technology for EVs is changing and churning so much that it's still a very big unknown. And what are people... What do people do when they're looking at unknown? Well, the first instinct is they're scared of the unknown, and that's a natural, instinctual reaction. I don't blame you guys. I'm actually considering switching to an EV, and that's the real thing. Like, how much money am I going to lose, and how much range am I going to lose? Case in point, though, after three years, so they monitored them for four years and a half, I believe, so far, and after three years, well... It was 64% of the EPA range, which we know is more than that because it was never really at 100% to start with. And it stayed at 64% for a year and a half after that. So it seems to flatline, as you see in the graphics right here. So that's kind of reassuring in a way. But again, there's so much that's unknown as far as the durability of these vehicles. Then that's why that's affecting EV adoption. Now, in my particular case, my scenario, and I made a video about this. It all comes down to numbers and money spent. I live, I live in an area that gas is extremely high. I also live in an area in North America. It's the cheapest place for electricity. So I'm still considering buying an EV just on these numbers alone. But that is my particular case. It's not the same for the rest of the country. So let me know what you guys think about battery degradation. Is that something that's scaring you enough to shy away from purchasing an EV? Or have you done your research and you're like, 2% a year is not that bad. I can live with that. And with the amount of fuel I'm going to save, the fuel cost I'm going to save, it's going to make up for it in the long run. That's also a big reason why EVs seem to depreciate a lot faster is because, well, depending how you treat an EV, if you fast charge all the time and you fast charge to 100% all the time, your battery degradation is going to be a lot faster. And you don't know what the customer or the owner before you, how he treated his EV. Did he treat it like shit and just charge it to 100% all the time? Well, you know, so that's what's making me think that buying a new EV is better than buying a used EV, even though the depreciation is that much. I want to hear your thoughts on this matter. And uh, thank you for pressing like and thinking about subscribing to the channel. We appreciate it. I'm going to keep drinking my honey water. Until then, I'll see you later.